You're listening to the WBT Podcast with Michael Lodge. Listen to all of our podcasts at www.wbtpod.com. Stay informed. Let's get started. This is brought to you by Lodge & Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518. Or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. And welcome to the WBT. This is Michael Lodge, and I'm glad that you have joined me. It's always good to sit down with you when we have the time on these podcasts and talk about things. I tell you this past week and the past two weeks, really, with the Senate hearings on Kavanaugh, has been really exhausting. I think, and I believe that most of America is exhausted. They're exhausted with seeing and hearing political games being tossed around as if it's for their benefit, not for the American people that they represent. I think a lot of us are just so frustrated to see an out of control judicial committee and senate that is so divided so divided that neither side wants to work with the other side i'm sure there are outstretched hands by certain senators and they call themselves friends but they don't act like friends do they they become very sneaky they become Senators and politicians who are willing to dig up anything about another person, willing to destroy a man's life, his wife's life, and the children that he loves. I don't know if anybody would even want to serve government anymore because it's such a dirty political institution. We see name-calling, we see accusations, we, we see people calling people rapists and racists and all kinds of different names and yet it does nothing for the nation and the only way that we can make change real change is through our vote i really believe this in all my heart that if we see politicians willing to follow a political agenda instead of doing what is right for their constituents and for america those people should not be serving in government. They should not even be close to a government seat because their desires are so evil. This nation was built upon democracy and, and our liberties. And we as Americans have got to start protecting our liberties because they are being attacked every single day. The Constitution is being attacked every single day. The right to be innocent until proven guilty is dwindling away. Accusation is now truth. And you are guilty. This is a dangerous step for America to take. But yet we see it happening every single day. So what do we do? Do we sit here and just take it? No, I don't think so. I think that we as Americans have got to stand up and say, okay, this isn't going to happen anymore in my nation, in my country, in my community, in my state, in my city, in my neighborhood. It shall not happen anymore. And we have to stand up and we have to say enough is enough. And we have to tell these politicians what you are doing is not for the country, but is for your own personal political power. You see, the problem with political power is that it becomes this need every single day by these politicians. Instead of serving, they serve themselves. Instead of serving you and me, as the constituents, they serve themselves because they get addicted to this power. And when you see members of 
various organizations within the government trying to take down the president, there is something wrong. This cannot happen. This cannot continue on like this. The United States of America is a much greater country than that. So what did we learn from this whole week of testimonies and cross-examinations? Well, we learned that when you apply for a job in the United States, you are subject to dirty tricks. I don't know why anybody would even want to become a judge or an ambassador or anything because politics becomes very, very dirty. So what did we learn from this week, from all this testimony and everything else and and political playbooks and grandstanding? Well, we learned nothing. There was an accusation by Ford. She came before Congress and basically her whole testimony, her whole testimony was the exact same as her letter to Feinstein. And we know that Feinstein got that letter in July and did nothing with it. Now she can pretend to say, well, I was trying to protect her, but she didn't protect her because it went right out to the press. But the problem is, it went out to the press in the opportune time for Feinstein to put a hold on the nomination of Kavanaugh to go forward. It was a political play. And she can deny as much as she wants. She can say, I never did this. I never sent that letter out. I never leaked the letter. But in actuality, she was in control of that letter from the very beginning and until now. Political games is terrible. So Miss Ford came in and she gave her testimony, but we learned nothing. We don't know how she got to the party. We don't know what happened. We don't know what house she went to or what neighborhood or community that it was in. And we don't know how she got home. And then we found out that she really does fly. And she flies all over the place. But her attorneys have said, no, no, she can't fly because she's afraid to fly. But here we find out that she's been all over the world and she's been over to the East Coast even within the last few weeks. So we caught her in a falsification. And then we found out that the lie detector test is being paid by someone else. And I don't know why she took a lie detector detector test who told her to do that and then we find out that Feinstein's office is the one that arranged for the legal team that she now has who are political operatives in the resistance movement so if you look at everything as a whole this is how I feel once you find out there is untruths There's more untruths. And the way that this whole thing was handled was so unprofessional and so unethical that that even puts even a higher burden on this woman's story. Yes, I believe that something may have happened. But I don't believe it was with Kavanaugh. Because so far... Ford has not been able to get anybody on her side to support her story. On Kavanaugh's side, he has a lot of people who are supporting his story. He was the only one in the hearings this past week that presented evidence, and that evidence was his calendar.
And then these senators took the calendar and tried to make out that he was a drunk. You see how dirty that this is? So we have senators out there yelling, women have got to believe, got to be believed. Well, I believe in that. But I also believe that we have the right to question what happened, especially when there's an accusation of sexual misconduct. We have the right to ask the questions of what happened. So at the end, if we wrap this all up, at the end, what do we have? We have nothing. We have a Senate in Flake who has decided that they need to have one more week for the FBI to go out and do an invest investigation. Well, the word investigation is the wrong word because all that they're going to do is they're going to go out with this list of names that have been submitted and just ask questions. They're not going to come to any conclusion. They're not going to do any police work. That's not their job in this case. All they're going to do is provide conversation, documentation on what these people have said, what they've corroborated. So at the end of this next week, basically we're going to have the same as what we have right now. We're not going to have anything more. Now what we may have is some more dirty politics, some more people coming up, up and trying to say, hey, it happened to me. So what has happened is that nothing has happened. We're at the same point as where we were two weeks ago when they closed the hearing. It's kind of a waste of American time, isn't it? A waste of American tax dollars. That political parties will spend so much time tearing a person down. Now, I feel sorry for the Kavanaugh family and for his children especially who are being attacked, threatened, accusations thrown at them. So Senator Feinstein, what she did is she opened up a whole can of worms. She created a whole can of chaos, and that chaos is causing damage to Ms. Ford and to the Kavanaugh's. And if people are being damaged so much, nothing is going to be resolved from by the end of this week. Just more damage. That means these two individuals and their families have got to go through hell for one more week while the Senate, the Democratic senators, play games. So it's time to end this. As an American people, it's time to end this nonsense because it can't go on and you can't keep damaging people's lives. We are not that kind of an America. But it seems as though that is what the new politics of the Democrats really want to do. They want to destroy. Their hearts are filled with so much hate and so much anger that they're willing to destroy children's lives. Every day as I sit and watch this, I become even more amazed because I'm hearing from all kinds of people from around the nation saying they are angry as hell. When Americans get angry as hell, things begin to happen. I tell you, that political karma, it's a bitch. And it starts knocking people the corrupt out of the system because people have had enough. Americans have had enough. If you look how much damage Pelosi and uh, uh, Feinstein, Schumer, 
Blumenthal, all these individuals who are on the constant warpath every single day, especially Elizabeth Warren, she attacks every single day. It is so much hate that they have nothing to present to the United States to make our country better. Instead, they attack and they attack and they attack and they they say impeach, impeach, and they say and and the list goes on. But they are unwilling to sit down with the other side and say, okay, let's get something done on health care. Let's get something done on the seven hundred thousand homeless American children that we have in the United States waiting for a home, waiting for a place to live. No, they don't do that. Or the homeless that are rampant in California, what can we do to that which has the highest amount of homeless? But they come up with no new ideas. All they do is complain, moan and groan, call people names, but yet there's no action on their part. To me, a good politician, even though they're not in the power at the moment, they're not the majority, they can still reach across the aisle and work with people, work with other senators, work with other congressmen on getting something done that they feel strongly about. But it doesn't happen. What happens is that they stand to the side and they put out all these tweets about how bad the president is or how bad Kavanaugh is or how bad American conservatives are or how bad just plain old Americans are. And they call them names. Which is despicable because these are the same Americans who are trying to live every single day in a chaotic government that they see on the news every day. So this is my prediction. Americans are going to be so fed up by November. Don't expect to see a democratic wave of anything. I think what you'll be seeing is that Americans are going to start waving goodbye to some of these corrupt politicians just so that they can have a little bit of peace in their lives every day and not have to hear about so much hate from these Democratic politicians. Expect to see a wave goodbye. Goodbye. Americans are going to wave goodbye and say, I don't want... People like Pelosi, I don't want people like Schumer, I don't want people like Blumenthal, I don't want people like Cory Booker, I don't want these people in my life anymore because they're doing too much hurt and damage to me as an American. Americans have watched this whole fiasco and have said to themselves, enough is enough. Enough is enough. So, at the end of this week, we were still at the same point. No one can prove their innocence. No one can prove the story that happened to them. No FBI review is going to do anything more. So now it's time for the GOP to get some, to step up and act like they're in charge because they are the majority and take a vote. But don't put Americans through this any longer because we've had it. I mean, me personally, as I look at everything that has been said and done and everything, I had to take a different approach to how I was listening to this testimony. 
And so I made the decision. I said, okay, I'm going to listen to the testimony. I am going to listen to the senator's responses and questions. But I'm not going to listen to commentary on the news. So every time that they would revert back to the news station or the network, I would turn off the sound because I did not want to hear what those commentary was going to be. I didn't want to hear it. I wanted to hear pure words from the victims, from or the alleged victim, and I wanted to hear from Judge Kavanaugh, and I wanted to hear clearly the questions and statements made by these politicians. Once you start inviting in commentary from the networks, then you literally go crazy. Absolutely go crazy. And you become a nutcase. Gosh, I've seen people cry and cry on Facebook and everywhere else because they were offended by what commentary was being made on the various networks. That's why I said several weeks ago, I said, you know what, we need to limit our news intake 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes a day, that's all we need to do. Because with all this commentary, political commentary and everything else, it just destroys your mental thinking and becoming individual and independent upon your own thought process. If you're listening too much to CNN, you're being you're being spun and spun and spun everything that's being said on CNN. And if you listen to Fox News, you're being spun and spun and spun on everything of every single political commentary and everything else that's being done. It's dangerous to you, so stop it. So throughout the questioning this week, I was able to focus on the words that were being said. And at the end of the day, and even to this day, (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) even to this day, not you, not I, can come to a conclusion of who's right and who's wrong. Those of you who are saying, she's right, well, now you're taking your political beliefs and running away with them. And you know for a fact that in this situation, People were damaged, families were damaged, stories were damaged, because politics destroyed everything. So again, we have no conclusion at this moment. You might have your personal conclusions or thoughts, but there are many open questions on her side and open questions on his side. But we also have an, an individual who has applied for this job and throughout the course of his tenure in government has served government 100% and plus. He has served as a good governor. There's not one single complaint against him as a, I mean, not as a governor, as a judge. There's not one single complaint about how he judges. Not one single one. But now we have these sneaky allegations that have come through with no evidence, no support, nothing. So at the end of today, at the end of now, we're in the same boat. And I say, let's move on, let's take a vote, and let's end this whole thing. No more politics, no more stupidity, no more games being played and trying to make the time last longer and trying to be a political hack. It's time now to just move on. 
the American people want it, I want it. The only people who don't want it is the Democrats. That's the only people who don't want it. I remind you of what happened in this nation when Americans got so fed up that they put in a president that they wanted not what the politicians wanted, not what the parties wanted, because even the Republican Party fought against Donald Trump for a long time there. But the American people chose an individual. They made the choice. They were the silent majority who made the choice for president. And you politicians out there who are still fighting this, still upset about it, move on. You're doing too much harm to this nation. Americans want a better nation than what we're getting right now. This whole week on television, I tell you, it was so frustrating to sit there and listen to the nonsense and the games and the grandstanding. We've had enough. So with you and I on this weekend, let's take a break from politics. Let's end it with this podcast right now for this weekend. And let's just move on. Let's be with our families. Let's let's go to a movie. Let's go to the beach if you can. Let's go out and take your tackle box out in your in your fishing rod and go to the lake and catch some trout. Forget about this politics because this politics is so nonsense at the moment that it's going to do you and me more harm the more and more that we think about it. Because we know, as Americans, we have the ability to change this in November with our vote. It's up to us. I I encourage every single one of you to get out there in November and vote. If you have early voting, vote. But vote out evil, vote out hate, and vote out the most vile politicians that are doing harm to this nation. So let's take this weekend, today, Saturday, and Sunday. Sunday, go to church, renew yourself. Listen to my podcast on Church Sunday. Because we're going to renew ourselves. We are going to become better people. And we can lift ourselves up. We can recharge our batteries. And we can get out there for the next week. And do great things. Because it's up to us to do great things. And when it comes time for November. We will make our own decision on these politicians. Turn off the newscasters. Turn off the commentary. Turn off the political pundits. And you study the process, and you study the individual, and you make the final decision. Don't base it on your party. Forget that. Base it upon the individual and what they stand for. And then what I want you to do, pray about it. Pray for this nation, and pray that you make good decisions on the people you are voting on. So let's get to it. This is a good weekend. I'll talk with you on Sunday. Join me for Church Sunday and we'll we'll uh, be blessed. And I'll talk with you very soon. And you can reach me on Church Sunday at the www.wbtpod.com. I'll talk with you soon. This is Mike Lodge. Have a great weekend. Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs. World of Business and Taxes on Co, a business and tax advisory firm 
where your success is our goal. Call us today toll free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services.